Hello, this is Fast Matt from San Antonio, Texas. Today I wanted to show you a speak and read that I have purchased recently and it doesn't quite work right. And this is a pretty common issue in the older Texas Instruments devices such as this one. Uh, what happens is it's just a little bit glitchy. And we can see that when we try to turn it on. It will uh, miss words or it just seems to kind of glitch out. You can see some weird things happening at the screen or sometimes it doesn't say what it's supposed to say. It shuts off randomly, it sh and this is without any modifications already, so it's not on purpose that this is happening. It's just not quite working right. What typically is wrong in this case is on the power board, we will probably have to replace a capacitor or maybe a few capacitors. And so my goal today is to crack this thing open and show you what that looks like and how to do that. It's a pretty simple repair. So it kind of worked there, but not quite. So it's just just a little too glitchy to use. So we're going to turn it off. I'll we'll go ahead and crack it open. And if you've ever, never opened one up, it's two screws and then these four tabs. So we'll go through that. Let's take the screws out. If you've seen any of my other videos, um, I've been doing this for about 20 years. I had these when I was a kid, uh, this type of device, and, and uh, just in my adult life, fell in love with the idea of modifying and, and reselling them, and, and that's what I've been doing for a long time. So what I often do is I buy uh, these devices from eBay in a non-working state, like the seller might have tested them and realized it didn't work right and just listed it, and I was able to purchase it for a cheaper price, and oftentimes I can fix them. So uh, these tabs are tricky. Um, I use a flat, kind of a flat bladed pliers and uh, you can use a screwdriver too that would work but what I do it, 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 there's this little tab inside and you barely push on it just enough to clear the other half so that you're not snapping the tabs off and I'm also gently spreading the handle like that just pulling up on this half of it to get past that catch and then doing the same on the opposite tab you won't be able to see from my hand here but, uh, and then these front ones. It's one of those things that just takes a bit of practice to get. And then it still will feel like it's, you know, catching on something, but it really just needs to work its way loose here. And sometimes it might actually be catching on something. I have to do this one again. There we go. All right, so we've opened it up. And what you can see is a much smaller circuit board than I think people realize, but this is the main circuit board here, and you can see the speaker. And then this is the power supply board, and this is what we'll be targeting today. This is typically where we have the most issues with one of these speaking spells or speaking reads from the 80s. Um, what can often happen is the capacitors can just wear out over time, and that's what we're targeting today. But you can also see a scenario where the transistors have become burnt because of using the, a, a, a power supply board that's incorrect, and I might cover that in a different video when I have one, uh, but these transistors here can get, these black things, these transistors, can get destroyed by incorrect polar, polarity or incorrect voltage on an external power supply. Uh, but here, we will be replacing this little blue capacitor. Let's uh, see if I can get a better shot of this here. Um, this capacitor right here, it's a, a like a teardrop shaped, they call it a tantalum capacitor. And this is the first one I target whenever I'm uh, seeing this issue. And I'll show the little clear here in a second, but these have a polarity. There's a plus side and a minus side. So we'll have to be mindful of that when we put in the new one. And just so you can see what they look like, I have a whole bag of them here. This is a 6.8 microfarad tantalum capacitor. And I get these on, in bulk on eBay. This is what they look like. Two leads. They do, it does matter how they're used. There's a plus side and a minus side. And you, if you look closely, you can see the plus side marked on the body here. And we have to make sure that goes in the hole that is also marked plus on the circuit board. All right, so setting those aside, the very first thing we have to do is to realize which holes this capacitor uses on the opposite side of the board. 
and I can tell that it's these two here, this one and this one. So I'll be using a desoldering vacuum tool, a plunger type. These are rather cheap. You can buy these at an electronic store or, or on Amazon. And the way they work, it's a plunger type. And you push on the plunger, and then whenever you're heating the component with a soldering iron, put this right next to the solder, and then push the button, and it sucks up that solder. And then I have a trash can down below. I push the plunger back down and let that uh, old solder just go in the trash and then do it again. So I'll go ahead and I've got my soldering iron heated up already. I'm gonna tin it just to make sure. Good heat transfer. You can see that's very shiny on the very tip. So we will apply the heat to the joint and then use the plunger. And again, we're attempting to suck up the solder so that we can free this old capacitor from the circuit board without damaging the traces. Gonna do the other one. This sometimes is a little fiddly, making sure we can free it up from here. Let's see how I did. Sometimes we have to work the points out a little bit. Here I'm just trying to get the leg free from the edge of the um, hole. Oops, I'm push that down. There we go. So the old one has fallen out. Remember, it's going to be slightly hot at first. Should be fine now. Yeah, we're good. And as you can see, you can't really visually tell an issue, right? I mean, it's not like it's cracked or anything. It's not broken. But we suspect that this is this is usually the one that fails. It's causing the glitchiness. And so then we have to look at this. Uh, I'm just bending it a little bit here. But we can see on the circuit board. Let's see if I can show this better. We can see here the plus sign is sort of down close to this rounder capacitor, so we have to make sure that the plus leg goes in there on this new one. Here's a new one. We can see on the body of the capacitor the plus sign is also pointed downwards, so then we will insert the two legs into the holes. And then I like to just kind of get it in there and sort of bend it back where it was. And um, I would usually then just uh, get it back and ready for soldering. So what I'll do now is I've got some, my solder is pretty thin. You might have seen a much larger, much thicker solder for sale in electronic stores. I like this uh, really thin stuff. It's uh, 60, 40, uh, 10 and lead. And it's, I think it's 0 0.032. It's real fine and it works very well for this type of work. And then soldering iron, it's a, this is actually kind of a fancier iron I have from Circuit Specialist. I've been using it for years. And we'll just heat up the pad and the metal leg and then apply some solder. And I like to leave it on there for just a second to make sure everything gets really good and hot so we don't have a cold, cold solder joint. To the other side. Get a good flow. Okay, that looks good. And now I'll go to trim the legs. All right, I have a new capacitor replaced. Let's see if it works. Word tap. Level one. Hear it. Letter stumper. Level one. Very stable. Picture read. Read it. Level one. Word maker. Level one. I like to do an alphabet test too. Go to the hero. Hear it. Go. Which word? And just A. Push all the words. C. Make sure it's all stable. D. Make sure the keyboard's good. E. F. G. H. I. So here you can hit erase and then keep going. J. You. Oops, sorry. I missed it. K. 
L M N O P Q R S. Race. T U V W X Y Z. Words app level one. So it's working great. Um. Before I knew how to do that, what I would do is I would, whenever I had like a bad, something else bad with the with the device and I'd want to just keep parts, I would desolder the whole board and keep these as spares. And uh, and, and I, w I knew how to test them and make sure they were good. I always thought it was the whole board that was bad. Then I realized it was, of course, the individual components that were going bad and in particular the capacitors. So this one's good. If it were still acting up, what I would next do is replace this little capacitor here and, and this one here, um, but I rarely have to do that. It's usually this blue one, and, and I'm kind of surprised because I never thought capacitors like that would wear out. Uh, these are pretty notori notorious for going out too, and, and I have replaced a few as a last resort. I've, I've got a stash of those too, and sometimes that does help, but usually it's, it's either this one. Actually, I think what I do is this one and then the electrolytic, which we know electrolytics go bad pretty, pretty often, but it's pretty rare I see it, this one going bad. But in that order, this one, this one, and then if I really have to, the, the, the ceramic ones. But other than that, um, there's not much else goes wrong with these. Um, if you have, again, a, 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 the incorrect voltage applied with the external power supply, which I never recommend, that definitely fries transistors. There's nothing else in here that can protect from that. There's no fuses to replace. Uh, there are some diodes, but I've, I've never seen those go bad. Uh, but really, it's the transistors and the caps that we look at here. But uh, this one's in good shape and it's ready for me to use. Um, what I'll be doing next is circuit bending it, modifying it, and selling it as a musical instrument on, uh, on eBay and on my website at fastmat.com. So I hope this is helpful. If you, uh, if you again, uh, are looking to do this type of repair, you want that 6.8 microfarad tantalum capacitor. Um, I find them on eBay pretty cheap. And you definitely need your solder, your soldering iron. You need a good uh, desoldering tool like this one. This one has been by far the, the best one I've used. Um, I've tried the soldering wick before. Um, I even have a really big vacuum solder, uh, vacuum pump solder, desoldering iron. It just doesn't work anywhere near as well as this does. So this has been what I go to all the time for desoldering. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like and, and give me any comments. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you.